Hi, um, I'm uh, scouring a fleece. I got this Black Mountain Welsh fleece um, just this weekend and I decided to scour it right away because I still have some uh, scouring solution. I use the Unicorn Power Scour. I've used it in the past and it worked really well, especially on like fleeces that I had lying around for many years that hadn't been washed. Um, and um, I was really happy with the results that I got with it. So I've continued with that. Um, I use, the method I use is uh, what I learned from Leslie of The Knit Girls on YouTube. Um, she did a video, I think four years ago now, uh, where she shows her fleece washing method with a couple of tubs. And um, I got some tubs and I tried it and it worked really well so it's become my method the one thing that i like to do because um uh, my parents have a on-demand um, water heating system and the kitchen sink happens to be the furthest away um, from the hot water tank so sometimes the it takes a while for the hot water to kick in um, i actually um, check the temperature of my water uh, with um, this is like a candy thermometer meat thermometer and I just set it to Celsius because um, The power scour is set to work at a lower temperature than some other scouring solutions liquids detergents um, and it works uh, at about between 40 to 50 degrees Celsius um, Which I think is like 120 Fahrenheit you can look online and, and they'll tell you um, anyway, so that's what I'm doing. We're just on, uh, the first wash so far. Um, and unfortunately it's black fleece, black counters, black sink. Um, so I don't know exactly how much is, uh, one is able to see, but like when I look at the liquid, when I look at the bottom in the tub, um, let's see. When I look, when you see the liquid in the tub is already starting to get that sort of scummy look. And one thing that I notice that happens when, when the lanolin is actually dissolving, it becomes like this yellowy orange color in the, um, in the water. It's just like dissolved in the water. So that's how you can sort of feel that it's actually working. Um, yeah, so after about 20 minutes, I will take out um, take out the, the wool and then drain this and then transfer it to the other bin. I do like the two bin set up because I do happen, there happens to be a nice amount of space here where they fit on the counter. So I can easily slide this one over, fill this one up, transfer the wool from one to the other, and then, um, and then dump it. Um. Yeah, that's what I've done in the past. Um, this is how many, well, I've washed a fair amount of wool. I think I've probably, I had a lot of samples of wool that were um, just sort of like a pound here and a pound there that I, well, I'm just like, um, my brother went to visit somebody who had a sheep farm, who had meat sheep, um, that I think is a like a South Down um, breed uh, and he just grabbed me a bunch of fleece to play with um, which was a very dirty fleece and uh, so I did I have I did try processing some of that before I had like an official wool scouring product um, just with dish soap and it just like the wool feels better coming from from an official product from just using dishwashing soap. Um, yeah, so I felt, I feel better about using those kinds of products. And um, yeah, so I think I've, I've probably washed about a fleece's worth of, um, of wool, just not necessarily from one specific sheep. Um, so this is like my, probably my, this is like my second fleece. I have another fleece downstairs that also needs washing, um, which is a very nice fleece that I bought at a wool festival 
think like seven years ago now, um, uh, that had been sort of washed in rainwater. So it's like, it just, it still has lanolin in it. So it might need just one rinse um, with a scouring, with the Unicorn Power Scour. Um, yeah, so I'll, 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 uh, I'll show you what I do once, when I'm transferring from one tub to the other, when it's time for that. Hello. Ah, it's time. Um, I think, I don't know if you can see yet the grimy water, because the dark fleece on the dark counter, but once I start lifting this out, And you can see how dirty this water is. I might have to do two or three um, rinses with this. See, those didn't even miss that much wool, and those look kind of like second cuts anyway, so that's pretty good. Just to get rid of that. Um, I've definitely gotten used to this extending um, nozzle thingy on the sink. It definitely makes filling these easier because um, I can just do that, right? And then I can just fill it where it needs to be instead of trying to um, monkey with it too much. You don't need to watch me fill this whole thing. Okay, so we're filled up. I'm gonna use this, this like meat candy thermometer thing. And I don't know, you probably can't see that, but we're at about, forty six degrees Celsius, which is in the range of working temperatures for this prop for the unicorn power scour. Um, and This top, I'm not, I don't know about this top. And screw it and then it dribbles. Or I take it off and the whole thing comes off. Anyway, so for the, uh, these containers are, I think like 25 liters. I took the stickers off, which tell you how many liters they are and is like 20 to 25 liters so that's what I've calculated for the amount of scour that I'm putting in and I try to just I'm not trying to get it to be lathered I'm just trying to get it to be distributed in the water because it's not the bubbles that are doing the work and then I'm going to put my fleece back in the water 
kind of all in a ball. I am really ginger when it comes to moving these things around. Um, And it's recommended to just take out little bits of vegetable matter um, as you come to it. I didn't, I could have pre-done that on this fleece, but I could have spent hours doing that. This is not a coated fleece. I'm just going to spread that out a little over there. Okay. And I'm going to let that sit for another 20 minutes. I would probably do like a second batch at the same time, but I only have so much um, so much of this left. Like this is all I have at the moment and I'm not sure. I might just do like a sample quantity so that I can process it and decide how I want to spin it. Um, rather than getting everything to like a medium stage that it's still not able to be worked. So um, yeah. But otherwise, I would probably be doing more than just one bit at a time. So here is the fleece. Um, it is not a coated fleece, so there is hay and things in inside. But it's not so, it's not as bad as other fleeces that I've had that were not necessarily intended for spinners. So this is a relatively clean fleece. And what else what else is nice is like the lock structure is still quite open. I've had other fleeces where they're very dense um, and like caked with mud or sheep crap or whatever. Um, and so they really needed flicking open. These ends are nice and clean. They're a little sun bleached, but they are otherwise in a good state. And like, oh, I can't use both hands here, but like they're easily, I mean, I think it could, uh, one could spin like directly from the locks here in the grease. Um, yeah, which I have never tried that. Um, it's not, I mean, it's kind of sticky with lanolin. I've just been standing here picking out some of the easy to grab big pieces of vegetable matter. Um, and like, I don't mind if that gets into the finished yarn because I don't mind picking that out even as I'm spinning or like as I'm knitting, I'm very used to doing that with like Riggs and Little has, has some vegetable matter in it. So I'm quite used to doing that and I kind of like it. It's like, makes it somehow more interactive. Anyway, um, yeah. So I'm just doing this while I'm waiting for um, my second rinse. And I like, I don't know. For some reason I had in my mind that like a two pound fleece is like a small fleece, but this, this is a lot of wool. I think I will definitely have enough for at least um, one good size sweater project in here. Um, I think there are some Kempy bits still in here, but, um, I'm just washing everything because when I took it out and looked at it yesterday, it was in a fairly good state. So I might just save those rougher parts, um, after it's been washed, um, for sampling or, you know, just to play with. And then, uh, and then keep the nicer parts for um, the spinning project. What I have in mind for this is um, I tend to spin fairly finely, like fingering to lace weight, which is kind of why I don't spin a lot because um, it takes a while. When you're, I mean, even if you're just doing, even when I'm just spinning like four ounces, it can take a while to spin that much. And I don't have a great uh, spinning setup at my parents' house. Somehow, like, all the seats, all, I mean, I mean, the area where we watch television doesn't have a lot of room for extra furniture in it. My parents bought a, have a large sectional couch, and, um, I don't, 
there's not a lot of chairs that are like at the right height comfortable for me to spin at so I just my last spinning project I think was like two years ago when I spun um, a felting bat from custom woolen mills uh, into yarn into a three ply for a sweater um, which I knit into a Parisian dreams sort of a cropped version of that sweater which I've been wearing a lot lately. I really like that sweater. Um, and that was a fun project. So, I mean, I'm kind of taking the excitement about um, getting a dark fleece and um, using that momentum to continue on and making it into a spinning project, possibly. Um, yeah. So here we are. I mean, the newest fleece on, that I've received and already I'm scouring it, so that's a good sign. Definitely a good sign. <laughs> okay, so I guess you'll just watch me like obsessively pick out this stuff and I'll ramble on a little bit more. Um, So for this project, I'm thinking um, I'll probably, well, we'll see how it is after it dries. It has a nice, like, it's fairly open already, so we'll see how the scouring impacts that. Um, I'll probably still card it. Um, I do not have a drum carder. That's one of the reasons why I haven't processed the finished processing the other raw wool that I have uh, accumulated is because the idea of doing all that with hand cards was a little bit daunting. And um, Jerome Carter has, I mean, it's like, it's hard to justify like a single use item like that, but I do have a significant amount of raw wool. In any event, for the time being, um, I have a set of hand cards that I bought for $15 at an antique store in Quebec City many, many years ago. Um, I got so excited um, on a, I was on a summer trip with my parents. They would, when I lived in Montreal, they would come visit in the summer, me and my brother, and we, we would go on little road trips. Um, we went to Quebec City for a weekend or I think. And um, my parents like going to antique stores. And the nice thing, the really cool thing about like East Coast um, antique stores, especially in Quebec, is that you're gonna find spinning and weaving equipment. And um, I was very excited to see at one of these, it's not the sort of thing that you see like in Alberta very much, especially like stuff that's actually usable and workable. It would be stuff it like, there's an antique mall here in Edmonton that does have a very pretty looking uh, spinning wheel that they've had for many years um, that's been painted, fun colors, but it's really just like a visual object and not a working object. Um, I don't think it has a full flyer and it do doesn't, it only has like maybe one bobbin. I don't think, it even had, I mean, usually there's no drive bands because often drive bands were just pieces of cotton. Um, and so those rot over the years. Uh, but I think like the footman was broken and missing and, and it was very expensive. So that's why it still just sits there as an object. But like in Quebec, um, there was a lot of production of spinning as like, as a cottage industry, I believe. Um, and so there are, uh, I mean, there are Quebec production wheels and there are um, groups on the internet just about preserving and repairing these old spinning wheels that are apparently very nice to spin on. I've never uh, spun on one though. And yeah, like this one antique store that we went into just had like weaving bobbins and shuttles and um 
There, I think there was even a loom and like a big old floor loom that looked like it had been homemade by somebody. And then these hand cards for like, I think it was, they were $15 for, you know, your good standard wool hand cards that were in decent shape. So that's how I got um, some hand cards. I wasn't even like, I was still working with uh, a lot of prepared fiber at that time. Uh, like mostly top, combed top, um, which is very prevalent in, in, in its availability for spinning. And um, yeah, I hadn't even tried long draw yet. Um, and I think the first thing that I ever used the hand cards for was preparing some cotton um, one summer. A friend, and, a friend of mine and I, I had this brilliant idea to try spinning things that we had never spun before, um, which caused both of us to buy a bunch of weird fibers that we had never spun or tried. Um, yeah, I don't know that that was a smart plan, but it was a fun project. Anyway, it is time for me to uh, switch the water. All right, so here's the second, wa the water from the second um, scour, and that's already much cleaner. Um, I don't know, I'll s I, there wasn't a lot of scunge at the bottom of the first one in terms of like debris. So I think I might just do a rinse on this one. I'll see how, I think we're good to start rinses. Yeah. So for drying fleece, um, we happen to have one of these, um, they're like pantry racks or kitchen rack things. My mom uses it for when uh, she starts seedlings in the spring. That's what she got it for. She also uses it for um, storing pottery in progress. And um, I, oh, can I not? I have also used it, I also use it for fleece drying and sometimes um, when I'm blocking things at like a sweater and it's already saturated and sat on a towel for a day or two but it's still quite damp, I'll put it onto one of these racks and lay it out flat so that it can get more air circulation. Our basement's fairly cool, uh, so things don't dry quickly. And then for the fleece, when I'm putting fleece on these shelves, I lay out, uh, I made these sort of, uh, these muslin shelf liners. I have, it just happened to be like, not quite the width of fabric, but I made, I, th I think I made three of these the last time I, um, had a bunch of fleece that needed to dry and it ended up doing a nice job of drying quickly without um, getting any gook on the shelf or um, or like having stuff fall through and yeah so it worked quite well I'll show you what that looks like once I've loaded the shelf okay up. so here we have the fleece on the shelf laid out to dry. Try not to take up too much room because this is maybe a third of the fleece uh, is right here. So, um, and as you can see, there's stuff on the other shelves. So, I mean, I might need three shelves. We'll see if we get to that. And I mean, uh, I don't know if anybody else is going to have this situation where they're working on a rack that also has pottery on it, but I moved the earthenware that has not, or the greenware that has not been um, bisque fired yet, I've moved it up out of the way rather than leaving it underneath because uh, it could re, it, it's possible to rehydrate this and make it back into usable clay. So I don't want to wreck uh, these vessels. So, and then here's a bunch of um, cords from the grow lights that end up getting wired onto these shelves. So this is like, real life basement and these are some of the little greenhouse units that my mom uses for her seedlings when she's first starting them. This is the basement room of extra stuff and uh, like my stash lives down here. We dry sheets um, and we grow seedlings in the spring. Um, and once upon a time it was my brother's room.